A good afternoon, a good morning, or a good evening to you. Welcome again on to Honest Commission. Now with myself, uh, Tabansa Khaichu. It's always such a privilege to be in your company. Again, I'd like to take this moment to just wish each and every mother out there a happy International Mother's Day. I know on Sunday the 8th, 2022 of May, that's when we were actually celebrating, officially celebrating, commemorating, and observing uh, the special day of Mother's Day, celebrating mothers from all walks of life. So behalf of God's Hara mission. Uh, may the God of glory continue to strengthen you, to bless you and your family. May he increase your territory. May he continue to use you in whichever space he has put you at this moment, um, just for his glory, for his honor, and of course, for his children. Uh, so today, you might have guessed, I'm going to just be pretty much teaching on uh, Proverbs 31. And I, when God laid this in my heart, you know, it was sort of like a reminder he was reminding me of of who i am as a woman right as a woman of god who i am in christ who i am in him more than anything who ha who who he has created me to be uh that is where i believe you know the god of glory was coming from in reminding me about this uh passage of scripture which i so love I absolutely, absolutely love it. So I'm going to touch on some verses. Please, when you have time, read through it, meditate on it, study it, and appropriate it for yourself by faith because the book of God, the holy book, the, the Bible doesn't lie. God doesn't just write things because it's bored. He puts things there for my benefit and yours and for us to understand, you know, what his thoughts are about us, who has he created, created us to be and how can we best walk in that calling, in that creation, in the intention of what he um, has, has laid in our hearts as his children. So, I will start from Proverbs 31, uh, Proverbs 31, verse 1. It says, a wife of a noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. I'm not going to limit this only to mothers. I'm going to be speaking to women in general, those that are going to be mothers soon, aspiring to be mothers, and those who are already mothers. So I'm going to be speaking to each and everybody, a sister out there, um, because I do believe in even when you are single and you are in that place where you don't have somebody right now in your life, it's not because that's maybe that's not God's plan for you. It's probably because the time is not right yet. God has not uh, said yes, okay, let's go. So you remain in faith, you remain steadfast, and you remain patient while God does what He can only do. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Integrity is what's going to set you apart, woman of God. That is what's going to set you apart, is to walk in integrity. Maintain your dignity. Maintain your self-respect. And that is how you're going to retain the value that the God of glory has placed in you. We cannot call ourselves women of God and still give in to worldly desires, worldly standards. The Bible says we are not to conform to the patterns of the world, but we are ought to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And that is when you sit in the word of God, when you dwell in his presence and you sit with the word of God, where you get to understand, you know, uh, what God wants, what God doesn't want. And all the lies that is being fed at you on a daily basis by worldly system, things that are absolutely um, not of God and, and, the, and, and um, the kingdom of God. And the truth that you get from the Bible is what is going to offset it. It will cancel that lie. It will bring in deeper understanding, correction, and revelation, revealing the lie for what it is. Uh, verse 12 says, she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. So you as a wife, I'm talking to you right now, if you are married, understand that whomever finds a wife finds a good thing. But not only does the Bible say that you need to demonstrate, that we need to live out that particular role that God has entrusted you with at this point. We are told or taught as, as women um, to move and operate from a place of humility you know and and do good because if you are a good thing what fruits are you going to be producing you're going to be producing good fruits so god doesn't say whomever finds a wife finds a good thing it is good because as a wife you will not you will only bring your husband good and not harm all the days of your life see the bible is so interlinked and god just doesn't say things because it's bored 
She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. A woman of God is one that doesn't have time to idle. You become productive, you are engaged, you are working. Okay, in as much as the Bible says husbands are to provide for their wives, it doesn't mean you need to sit down and fold your arms. You go after the passion and the dreams that God has placed inside of you and you do it in partnership with the Holy Spirit. And uh, God expects us to work, women and men alike. We are there to help and support our spouses, right? At the same time, you don't neglect what the God of glory has placed inside of you. And you can still go after what God has placed inside of you because there's a reason why he placed it inside of you. If you don't live out that passion, you don't live out the dream, you don't see to that which God has placed inside of you, somebody else is going to miss out from that because God uses people to bless other people. He uses people to be destiny helpers. So when you sit there and fold your arms and do nothing about what the God of glory has placed inside of you, you are standing in the way. You've become an obstacle, a stumbling block in somebody's destiny. 14 says, she is like a merchant ship. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. So we as women are created to be gatherers. We gather we accumulate this is not we accumulate people's things you accumulate your own things right you go out and get your own stuff i'm not talking from a feministic perspective but i'm talking from the fact that if god gave you the hands and gave you the brain that works and the mind that works that is sound and you can think straight what is stopping you from working hard and attaining that which has placed inside of you she gets up while it is still dark and provides food for her family and portions for her seven girls. So she's also a provider. You see the way I'm talking about? Yes, men are to provide for their wives. I'm not disputing that gentlemen. I'm not disputing that ladies. But you as a woman, you also provide food for your family. You also provide portions for your seven girls. So we do have a provision role to also play because it is in the Bible. <laughs> It is in the Bible. God expects us to do that, right? To be productive and to bear fruit and a fruit that is everlasting. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. So this woman proves that one woman, she's progressive in thinking. She's all about development. She's all about growth. Not from a narcissistic perspective, from, from a perspective of um, operating from a place of wisdom where she understands that we serve a God of multiplication uh, and, and, and God grants you the wisdom to direct how to best invest your money, how to best uh, direct your resources, how to best steward what he's entrusted you with. So she obviously considers means that she sits and she strategizes she thinks through her decisions. She plans. Planning is everything. She plans and then she decides, okay, this is what I'm going to invest my money on. This is the project I'm going to start. I'm going to start studying or whatever she does. But it is because of the fact that uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a thought process of growth and development in that process. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. So this woman is vigorous and she's committed and she's devoted to what is set before her. She ensures that, okay, in this place, space that I find myself, in this discipline where I find myself, um, it's profitable. I'm going to make sure that at the end of the day, I keep growing, I keep progressing, I keep advancing. And that is what it's all about, right? In her stand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. She is a woman who understands that by lending to, by giving to the poor, you lend to the to, to, to God, and God will be able to repay you. She's a giver. Okay, she's involved in her community. She's involved in her family. She plays a role of support, a role of growth, a role of uh, seeing what. Can she do to the betterment and to the upliftment of the people around her, not only her immediate family, but her community or even the globe at large? When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. So she does have good taste. <laughs> Jokes aside. <laughs> But what if she does? Okay, I love good things. Ladies, come on, back me up on this one. We love beautiful things. God created us that way, gentlemen. And that's just what it is. I do appreciate the finer things in life. And I don't think there's no shame in that. Um, so obviously because she's a woman who's diligent and she plans, she doesn't fear for her household because she understands that they're secure. They're secure in every respect where possible. Financially, um, 
emotionally spiritually and otherwise because i do believe that a house that is built um where laborers are laboring and it's not built you know um as good as the foundation is gonna be built in vain she makes coverings for her bed she's clothed in fine linen and purple you know scarlet and fine linen and purple these are all things that speaks to luxury so i do believe that god has created this and made it available to us because it's the god of abundance i'm not talking also please don't get me wrong about aspiring to worldly riches from a place of loving money and uh worshiping the world and doing everything possible to gain worldly possessions i'm talking about being content in your space in that two bedroom in the three bedroom in the ten bedroom whatever size house you have that's not what really matters what matters is are you satisfied are you content uh, with what God has placed before you, what you are able to personally achieve. And that is where I do believe a lot of women can kind of like struggle, where you are always looking to the left, to the right, to see what your neighbor is doing, what your family member is doing, what your colleague is doing, which has nothing to do with you at the end of the day. We have no business, you know, uh, trying to figure out who's doing what, who's got the latest what. That is so irrelevant. Because now by doing that, uh, comparison will steal your joy. Comparison will steal your peace. And uh, it's a very dangerous place to be because envy can kick in and of course jealousy can kick in. So uh, as far as possible, mind your own business. <laughs> Just do what you gotta do in your business and uh, don't get um, caught up in what everybody else is doing because God has got... His, people are in different phases in their lives. We all are. And maybe you are in a place right now where you are like, well, I have been doing this. I have been doing that. I don't see God coming through. It's probably maybe because it's not your season. Maybe there's always a reason behind why things happen in our lives. Um, the important thing is that you must remain content. And that's why Apostle Paul says with little, I was content in as much as when I had plenty. And that is how you become the master of self, which is the flesh. Her husband is respected at the city gate where she takes his seat among the elders of the land. So obviously this woman has built quite a, a sound reputation, not only for herself, but for her husband. And the husband wears that with, with, with dignity. He wears that with pride to say, this is the good thing that the God of glory has blessed me with. Obviously holds her in high esteem, holds her in a place of um, appreciation, you know, adoration and admiration without worshiping her though, but from a place of saying, I appreciate you. I see you. I thank God for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. And because of that also people within their communities actually take note and, uh, they see, uh, from that, the respect for the husband is actually increased because the woman almost like carries, uh, his dignity with her. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days of days to come. Ladies, let me encourage you right now. Keep on praying for your family members. We find comfort as women, knowing that we have a, we've got somebody in our corner and who is better to entrust than the God of glory himself, than Christ Jesus himself, where Christ says, I got you, I am for you, I'll never leave you, I'm here with you in every way possible. We find comfort in knowing that somebody is in our corner. So in, don't trust <laughs> in mortal men. Trust God first, put Christ first, and you will see how everything works out for you. He will strengthen you, you know, he will lead you, he will direct you, uh, he, he, will, he, will, he will operate through you and for you and in you uh, to the benefit of other people. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. So this is a woman, obviously, who relies in the God of glory for wisdom, for insight, for leadership, be led by the Spirit. Wisdom doesn't come from men. Wisdom comes from God. Godly wisdom is what this Bible speaks about. So obviously she's mindful of what comes out of her tongue, which is what she has been feasting on or consuming. And that is where we have to also be very careful as women. What are you consuming? What are you consuming? What are you allowing in your space? What are you taking with you to bed? She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. She's occupied. She's busy. <laughs> you know the saying that says, uh, of course, we know that an idle mind is a devil's playground. And then you get the opposite of that, which says uh, a busy field doesn't grow grass. 
you can be one of the two. You can be an idle mind, which is the devil's playground, or you can be a busy field, which does not grow grass. I think this is pretty much self-explanatory. We have to be busy, but not only busy bodies. Busy in a sense of we've got direction, we know where we are going, and we know with whom we are going. Where you are able to get all this is from spending time in the presence of God, spending time with Jesus and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead, to reveal uh, the will of the Father for your life. We are not called to idle about. We are called and commissioned to live out the will of the Father for our lives in every facet, in every sphere. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. So obviously, the husband of this Proverbs 31 woman adores her, his wife, you know, and the children, uh, they call her blessed because they can see the God of glory working through her and they get blessed as well um, from, from her blessings, right, which is just so beautiful. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. And this is coming from the husband to the noble wife. Obviously, uh, loves her as Christ loves the church. Do we brothers love our? Do you brothers love your wives, your counterparts, um, as Christ loves the church? Because women are called to respect their husbands. Husbands are called to love their wives. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Look, we all gonna wrinkle up and shrivel and dry up, okay? That's just standard procedure. <laughs> so ladies, you're not gonna be always that beautiful swan, okay? That is the fact. But um, in as much as charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, if you remain rooted in God, um, you will be praised, young and old alike. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. So what she puts in, the works that she puts forward is what speaks for, her, speaks for her. That is how she earns the respect of neighbors. That is how she is praised at the city gate because she does whatever she does diligently, wholeheartedly as unto the Lord and operates from a spirit of excellence. So I just thought to share that uh, with you ladies, this wise sayings, which I love so much in the book of Proverbs. Um, in fact, this piece this last piece proverbs 31 which is the last chapter of the book of proverbs these are sayings of king lemuel which is quite uh quite interesting you know and here when you read from one to nine he was actually advising a young man um and he was speaking about um what his mother taught him so the first verse 31 31 one says the sayings of king lemuel an oracle his mother taught him so this is the mother speaking to his son oh my son oh my son of my womb oh my son of my vows do not spend your strength on women your vigor on those who ruin kings so running around and sleeping with this man and that woman gentlemen not going to work that is the quickest way to your ruin and demise it is not for kings or Lemuel, not for kings to drink wine nor for rulers to crave beer lest they drink and forget what the law decrees and deprive all the oppressed of their rights give beer to those who are perishing wine to those who are in anguish let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves for the rights of all who are destitute speak up and judge fairly defend the rights of the poor and needy so very interesting this is all from um proverbs 31 from 1 to 9 and where i was reading from where the description of a no of a wife of an over character character is everything to god is from 10 to 31 those are the verses so do spend time do spend time to dwell in the word of god find out how you as a woman can um really um ask christ jesus to mold you into the woman that he's intended for you to be if you are a good thing you'll have the goodness of god operating in you and through you and that is what god wants people to witness at the city gates why where his prayer the praises are going to come from the fact that you are doing what the god of glory is doing people are going to witness god's character in you traits um attributes being demonstrated through you in order to be a blessing to other people to bring about change to bring about impact and transformation inside out from a spiritual perspective emotional psychological and eventually physical so ladies do sort after being the proverbs 31 woman that the god of glory 
has intended for you to be. This is your identity, not what the world says, not what uh, other people's opinions of you are, but what the word of God says. So listen and believe, trust and act only on the on the word of God. Don't, don't just be hearers of the word, the book of James says, but let us be doers. Be that Proverbs 31. Be that Proverbs 31 woman that the God of glory has created for you to be it's inside there you need to tap in there and you need to start cultivating her the world needs her right now for you are born for such a time as this rise up gather your strength in christ remain strong and focus on that which the god of glory has placed inside of you and with that again happy international mother's day thank you so much enjoy the rest of what this beautiful month of may has in store for you may the god of glory cover you may he shine his face upon you and your family may he be gracious unto you and bless you abundantly from glory to glory from everlasting to everlasting stay strong stay rooted stay prayerful continue worshiping god and trust him regardless of what your situation says so on behalf of god's Hara mission thank you so much signing out it is Taman Zakhaiju. Thank you for being a part of this segment this evening and may God bless.